Okay, we're back and we're going to continue our conversation on the New Deal uh, and we're going to uh, move into the second New Deal, which is the second part uh, of the FDR's New Deal. Okay, so we're continuing our conversation of FDR and the New Deal. Um, and we're going to start about the second New Deal. Okay. And really, again, the second New Deal is still still FDR's first term. It's still part of this, this early 1930s. We're just moving past those first 100 days. And remember, the purpose of the second New Deal is going to be reform, where those early, early stages of, of the New Deal were you know, relief and recovery. Let's stop the bleeding. Let's feed the people. Let's house the people. Let's stop the banks from failing. Now the second part is how do we stop this from happening again, right? Let's reform things. Let's fix the problems that are there that, that allow this to happen, okay? So the, the first thing that, that they do, and this is really kind of a, a transition from the end of the first 100 days into the second New Deal. And it was, um, it was really, um, it was in the first 100 days, but it was permanent reform. Uh, permanent change. And this was uh, a thing called uh, the Tennessee Valley Authority. I'm going to go ahead and make that long to begin with because I'm figuring this out. The Tennessee Valley Authority or TVA. Uh, and, and what the TVA is, is a, it's a series of dams because so one of the things that President Hoover had done uh, before FDR, but President Hoover had initiated a study of the American South. Let's let's do this study of the economics and the social, you know, structure and what's going on in the American South. And it came back um, at the end of his term and the beginning of FDR's term. And the reality was the American South was very, very behind the rest of the country. And it was very rural, very agricultural, but it had these pockets of deep, deep poverty where the rest of the country had electricity and had running water and had the radio and had all of these things. Much of the South, especially the Appalachian South, if you think of that Appalachian Mountains that comes along um, the Eastern uh, part of the United States, uh, that that area of the country was so poor and was not electrified. It, it was not running water. Uh, the health of the people in that region was so horrible. It was just uh, like a second country. It was it was in such horrible shape. So they created the Tennessee Valley Authority, and I'm going to try to. Uh, we we might lose our whiteboard um, while I try to do this. I'm going to try to share a screen of. Uh, you're going to see all my windows here. Um, well, <laughs> uh, oh, here, I bet I can go down here. There it is. All right. So, um, here it is. So the Tennessee Valley Authority, uh, I, this is very near and dear to my heart because I lived in East Tennessee. I got my PhD from the University of Tennessee here in Knoxville, right? I was in grad school when Peyton Manning was the football, um, when they won the national championship under Peyton Manning as quarterback, if anybody cares. Uh, and I lived right up this liver, river here um, uh, in uh, Morristown, Tennessee. Uh, which was um, just a nice little little town, I guess. Uh, but but uh, so the idea was to go in and dam up the Tennessee River. And you can see, you know, the Tennessee River runs all the way through Tennessee. It dips down into Mississippi a little bit, into Alabama, Georgia, back up through Tennessee, right? And it's just this big, uh, wide kind of rambling river. It's it's a really beautiful river. It comes it comes right up through through Knoxville and this whole area. Uh, and the idea was to go in and to dam the river in along different points. And you could see all these different spots where they've dammed it. And 
uh, uh, put in hydroelectric dams with the idea of providing cheap electricity to this area of the country that needed it so badly. You know, this, this region, this Appalachian South, um, you know, the Appalachian mountain chain runs right along down here. Beautiful, you know, North Carolina, East Tennessee, Georgia, uh, the best motorcycle riding roads in the world are, are right in this region with the Smoky Mountain National Park. And um, if you ride motorcycles, look up dealsgap.com or dealsgap, um, phenomenal motorcycle riding. Uh, but but it, it's so poor. And the idea is if you dam up these rivers, you bring in cheap electricity, which is one going to give electricity to the people in the region for the first time, which, you know, electricity is so nice. If you think about it, that means you don't have to have lamps. Um, it means you can work at night and you can read at night and study at night and, and that you can, you know, do, do so much more. Uh, you can have a radio and be connected to the outside world. You can have a vacuum cleaner. Uh, all of these things that electricity is is uh, really makes our life better. Uh, it will also bring in um, companies to the area because if you have hydroelectricity, it is very cheap electricity. Hydroelectric power is incredibly efficient and incredibly cheap. Um, I lived again. I lived right up here for about eight years, and we lived just a few blocks away from Cherokee Lake, which was one of the dammed up lakes. Uh, and our electricity was so cheap. We had, you know, a little little house. We just rented this little, you know, just not, not a fancy place for sure. You know, maybe a thousand square feet, uh, 1100, something like that. But our highest electric bill was $50 a month. Um, and and it, it did hit 55 one month and I knew that the heat pump was broken. You know, most of the time our electricity was about forty dollars a month. Now it's a moderate climate there, but but uh, you know we kept it in ice box. My husband was a mechanic working outside all day, and and uh, we kept the house cold, and and uh, it was cheap. It was really cheap when we first moved to Denton, uh, when I, I and then had uh, our first electric bill. It was a shocker, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, so it it really. Uh, was an idea of helping the people in this region by bringing in businesses and by um, bringing in electricity. So this is, the TVA is one of those, it's technically in the first 100 days, uh, but it is obviously permanent, right? You don't temporarily, uh, you know, dam up a river. And this is going to create jobs, uh, people, you know, building these dams, obviously, uh, and then permanent jobs, the TVA still exists today. I wrote my checks every month to, to the TVA. So people are working there as well. Uh, now it, they did have to buy up land from people. There's, if you, um, if you like diving at all, uh, scuba diving, uh, Norris Dam up here, uh, they, they buried a whole town, you know, they, they flooded a whole town. So there's houses and, and buildings and things like that, that you can go and dive and look around at. Um, I, I don't like scuba diving. I, that's uh, <laughs> it's too scary for me. But but uh, I, I'd rather fly an airplane over it than than go under the water. But but uh, uh, you know it's it's uh, phenomenal. If you've ever seen uh, the movie um, Oh Brother Where Art Thou, uh, a really popular movie. I don't know, ten or fifteen years ago, probably. Uh, but but that very last scene where you know the the water comes rushing in and floods everything that was a, a TVA you know they had just dammed everything up and um, that was the result of that so uh, and he talks about that it's going to provide electrification and all of that so this is this is obviously a permanent change and a way to um, to to help help the people very successful uh, very successful program. Um, there are other uh, parts of this new deal um, that, that uh, are going to come about. Let me see if I can I'm gonna stop sharing that and then we'll switch to the what back to the whiteboard. Ooh, our same whiteboards there. How about that? 
All right. So you've got the TVA and you see how important that is. Uh, other programs in the New Deal, uh, you know, because in reality, there are millions of people unemployed and how are we going to fix this? Um, the Works Progress Administration. Or the WPA, right? The WPA, this is, you know, about 1935. This is going to be led by Harry Hopkins. You know, he, he the emergency, Federal Emergency Relief Agency, you know, things have gotten better. So they moved to this WPA. Congress allots $5 billion uh, to put people on the federal payroll. They hire people to do millions of people to do all sorts of different work. They build bridges. Uh, think about the Golden Gate Bridge, right? That's a, a WPA project. Think about um, different buildings across the country. If you go to Dallas to Fair Park and you see uh, the buildings at Fair Park and you see those big murals that are on those buildings, the buildings were built with WPA money and the murals were painted by artists and, and, and put tiles by artists that are paid by WPA uh, money. Uh, they build airports, they build roads, they build all sorts of things. And again, this is somewhat controversial because they do, they hire artists, they hire musicians, they hire writers, they hire historians who go and do oral histories, including um, with former slaves. We've got this great resource called the Slaves Narratives uh, where people went being funded by the federal government through this WPA to uh, interview former slaves who had survived. You know, This is the 1930s, this is 60 years later, so they're old. Uh, but but we've got those stories uh, because of this this federal money. They, you know, theater. This is this is a huge agency. They've got a ton of money. Obviously, it's flawed, uh, but but uh, it's it's just just phenomenal. Um, you know, and and then there are others that that come come out of it, and it's, it gets long and complicated. I do want to share. Um, this with you. So I don't know if you recognize this, the design of this, right? Do you see what it is? It's our little chapel, right? Our little chapel was part of this federal money out of the New Deal. There's Eleanor Roosevelt. She came to Denton uh, and she came to TWU and dedicated the little chapel. Uh, you can see uh, the the people who designed it and built it. Uh, of course, the windows, uh, all of the little chapel was built with uh, New Deal money uh, and private money. It was a combined effort. Uh, students uh, here at TWU uh, designed and made the stained glass. They made the lamps. They made the doors. They made the benches. You know. TW students did all of all of that work. So if you go in there, you can see these lamps are very beautiful uh, and, and detailed. Students carved the wood uh, for the benches. Students designed and built uh, the stained glass. And it's just, just a gorgeous thing. But all of this was paid for with New Deal money. Um, there's actually a great um, place that you can see where the United the campus was built. A lot of money came to expand our campus from New Deal money. Um, the the all, all sorts of buildings, the fine arts building, you know, the music building and the building across the the Pioneer Circle there uh, were both New Deal money. Uh, the Pioneer Woman Herself, uh, the statue was New Deal money. We have all these projects um, uh, in, in our campus that were from this New Deal money. Uh, you know, so it was, it was a huge part of all of this. I think the biggest piece of the uh, New Deal legislation, besides you know, obviously these per permanent pieces, uh, but um, the thing that is going to affect you a lot today as well uh, is the Social Security Act. Um, this is passed in 1935. Um, the Social Security Act is the most important single piece of social welfare legislation in American history. And this is the federal government saying, we're going to give the American people a safety net. This is a way to help the American people not starve if they get old. 
uh, and, and to help them out. So social security is an insurance policy of sorts, right? When you work that FICA that you see on your check is the money that's going into your social security account. And when you get sick or get disabled, you get that money back. Uh, when you retire, you get that money back. It's often small checks and it's, it's controversial. There's all sorts of issues um, that are now tied to it because members of Congress kind of took money out of the social security pot and spent it on other projects and then never put the money back into the social security pot. So um, it's not as stable as it should be. Uh, but the idea was that, that you have, you, you remove older workers from the working pool which is gonna open up jobs to younger people who have families and have obligations. Uh, you're gonna support the older people uh, and, and they're gonna uh, offer that sense of stability. Uh, so it's this great piece of legislation to uh, help the American people. And again, if, if you get disabled, even when you're young, if you get disabled, um, you're, you're able to apply for social security and, and get some support. So you get something. Uh, now, there are people left out of this uh, Social Security Act. Who doesn't get a paycheck? Right? Well, if, if you're a stay-at-home mom, you're not going to get a paycheck. You're not going to be putting anything into Social Security, so you're not going to get any Social Security. That's, that's how it is. Uh, there are a lot of jobs that were left out of the Social Security Act. So if you are a uh, a wage laborer or, or a farm laborer, right? A transient farm agricultural laborer, you don't get this. If you are a waitress, you don't get this. If you know, so there are certain jobs that that weren't uh, recognized by that Social Security Act. So they were often low-paying jobs. They were often women's jobs. They were often people of color's jobs, uh, and so it was flawed from its beginning. Uh, but it did provide some social, some some security to many Americans, if if not most Americans. Uh, but but it definitely left left people out. Um, so there are um, the the thing about so this um, New Deal, and again, I don't want to go on too long about this. But the the thing about the New Deal is, it doesn't end. The Great Depression, right? It doesn't end the Great Depression, but it certainly helps. And it makes a huge difference in the American economy by the government infusing money into the economy. It stabilizes it. It stabilizes businesses. It stabilizes the lives of the American people because they have these opportunities um, to, to help. Um, there are some people left out of the New Deal, uh, left out of the legacy of the New Deal, or either left out entirely or not helped at all, um, or not helped much. Um, Black Americans, other Americans of color, Native Americans especially uh, were not helped. Women were not helped. Uh, part of the reason is because of this idea of you don't want um, the wages of New Deal jobs to pay more than wages of private sector jobs. Uh, and so the New Deal government money that came into communities had to match the wages or be lower than the wages of the community. So they matched the racist wages, right? Where you have black Americans being paid less or women being paid less. Um, and so those New Deal monies paid less as, as well. Um, it, it really stuck to those social norms. Uh, with Native Americans, um, you have the reversal of that Dawes Severalty Act of the 1880s, um, the Indian Reorganization Act, it's called. And uh, you know where now Indians can own their own land uh, or tribes could own their land collectively Agricultural income of Indian Native Americans goes up uh, exponentially, but but still, you know, they're not given back the land that had been taken up from them. So, 
you know, again, I, I literally spend half a semester talking about the Great Depression and the New Deal. So uh, <laughs> I know this feels long for you probably, but it's very quick and short for me. And uh, the biggest thing I want you to take away from the New Deal is that it was a series of government programs that were in place to help the United States offer relief and recovery in those first 100 days and offer reform to help the United States not go into this, this piece again. Um, and it, it dramatically helps, right? This mass spending by the federal government dramatically helps the lives of you know, millions of American people. It provides us with you know, build, you know, half the buildings on our campus and UNT's campus and you know, Fair Park and you know, all these, these permanent things that we have because of it. Um, but it, honestly, it just doesn't go far enough to pull the United States all the way out of the Great Depression. Uh, not enough money is put into it. it. As much money as was put in, not enough was put into it to, to pull us completely out of this. Uh, remember, this is a global depression. Uh, you know, we'll talk about it briefly in the next uh, module. Uh, but this is a global depression. Uh, uh, and so... It, it's it's a problem all around. Um, so the New Deal does not end the Great Depression. Uh, World War II will end the Great Depression, uh, but it is still an incredibly important uh, series of legislation uh, that that is going to change everything in the United States moving forward from this. It's one of those real turning points in time uh, where the American people will have different expectations of the American government from this moment forward, right? Think about today, if a hurricane hits or a tornado hits, what do we do? Oh, where's FEMA, right? Where's the, you know, who's gonna come and help me? Uh, what, what, what loans can I get to help? Well, the government's gonna help with that. You know, if you, if you have serious problem, the government's gonna come help. People never turned to the government before the New Deal, never, because the government wasn't there for them. Uh, with the New Deal, the government is going to be more and more involved in the American people's lives. People will pay more attention and uh, have higher expectations uh, for the government uh, than, than they ever did before. All right. There's so much more that you can read about this and learn about this and uh, maybe become a history major and come take my uh, Between the Wars class and, and learn even more. All right. Well, thank you and uh, be sure to look at those other pieces of the module and let me know if you have any questions. And I will stop recording. <laughs> Maybe. All right, take it easy.